Forex Focus brought to you by IG. Taking a look at gap risk, we're going to work to define this for you and then also show you a couple of ways of how you could avoid it. Um, as this is, you know, a risk to almost every market, but we're going to do some of the background here uh, in the Forex market as we've had a recent market, the dollar versus the Israeli shekel that saw a huge gap around the geopolitical risk that has escalated in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas. But that's just the backdrop for uh, today's story. And, and before we get into that definition of gap risk is the potential for a market to move sharply in price with not trading in between, usually due to such market being closed. And, and so essentially, people worried about gap risk are worried about a market jumping higher or jumping lower when they don't have access to it. Uh, and so this example that you have here with the dollar versus the shekel, over the course of a weekend when stocks and, and futures and options and Forex are usually closed, uh, you can see some of this gap risk played out. And, and of course, you had Israel declaring war over the course of a weekend, and you have this market here, the dollar jump higher, the shekel jump lower by the time markets come around on Sunday night, Monday morning. And that's an example of uh, a gap in the marketplace and a risk that people want to maybe avoid. Now, this can vary by product and, and by market here. As you could imagine, markets that are uh, the more closed the market is, the more uh, vulnerable it is to gap risk. And, and with that, futures, Forex, and especially crypto have uh, a less uh, are less vulnerable to that gap risk. But just because the market's not closed a lot of the time doesn't mean that it's not a liquid a lot of the time, which can still uh, hold that gap risk. But we'll get to that in a second. The stock market, obviously, uh, being closed, excluding after hours trading, if your broker provides for that. But if the, the stock market is closed from 4 p.m. until 9.30 a.m. the next day, every night, that's going to pose a lot of gap risk, uh, especially if that market closes on 4 o'clock on Friday afternoon and doesn't open until Monday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, futures, a little bit better. And then some commodity markets like agriculture actually have uh, lesser hours, but majority of futures close at 5 p.m. Uh, and open right back up at uh, 6 p.m. there, and they'll trade through the night and everything else until the U.S. afternoon. And so on a Friday, closing at 5 p.m., but on a Sunday night, opening at 6, mitigating some of that. Forex, a little bit better than that. Throughout the weekday, doesn't close for even an hour like most futures do. And so trading concludes 6 p.m. on Friday, opens back up uh, on Sunday night. And then crypto, um, of course, a 24 7 market in a lot of places. Uh, little gap risk in terms of when the market is closed. Um, but also, this gap risk can correlate to volume as well. Liquidity is a big piece of this, too. And, and so, you have the weekday gap risk of uh, you know, a stock market here that we're looking at between four o'clock. Eastern and 930 the next morning. But also, even if futures are open during the night or Forex is open during the night or crypto is open all the time, there are going to be periods, especially between 4 p.m. Eastern and around 8 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Eastern. That's when Asia is starting to wake up and the Tokyo stock market is getting ready to open. But in that period, technically, no major market is open. The U.S. is closed for the day. Europe's been closed. And Japan is getting ready to open. Um, and, and so that, even if the futures market or Forex market or, or crypto market is open, can pose some gap risk just on lighter volume, lower liquidity. Um, but obviously, when the market is closed, that's huge potential for a gap risk. Um, and, and same goes for you know Friday all the way until Monday morning. Um, and so going back to our example, uh, weekends can pose the, the most straightforward gap risk here. Uh, and, and news uh, over the weekend can be some of the big promoters of 
gap risk coming to fruition. And in this in this example, um, you have Israel declaring war on a weekend uh, and markets not being open. And here's the dollar versus the Israeli currency not being open in real time uh, when this declaration of war news is coming out. And so the market didn't go from trading, uh, let's say, around 385 to 386, 387, and so on, to get up to where it opened around 395. Um, it just closed Friday there, and then Sunday it opened. And so if I was long or short, I couldn't do any trading in between those levels. It had gapped higher. Now, how can you mitigate some of this gap risk? Well, one, and, and this is one of the, the, the best ways, because, uh, of course, close, uh, liquidating all your positions on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whenever to mitigate gap risk isn't super practical, right? Um, especially if you have, you know, uh, a retirement account, uh, an IRA or a 401k, that's going to be nearly impossible. But you can diversify with positions that move independently of each other. This is why uh, a lot of people, especially as they get older and older, will allocate less money to stock investment and more to bonds or some other, you know, some cash, U.S. dollar, or even gold, uh, other safe havens or flight to quality, so that if something happens over a weekend or an off hour, your stocks might move one way and these other markets might move another way zigging when your primary investment sags but if you are an active trader you can especially gauging when fear is is in the market when uh that fear gauge is relatively high you can reduce exposure reduce size in general in your trading uh or reduce size going into a weekend if you are an active trader and then also if you're you know trading every in time frames of a couple of days or a couple of weeks you can do a little bit more day trading as well opening and closing positions intraday with little overnight exposure and little weekend exposure as well a few few ways for you to mitigate that gap risk. Um, and also, just to put it out there, gap risk can also be a, a strategic point or, or an opportunity for people to implement their strategy if you're using um, uh, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, uh, whatever your strategy is, uh, and you go into a weekend with little exposure or no exposure in whatever market is showing a, a gap move at the time, um, you can also look to trade off of that and put new positions on relative to that gap. But there's gap risk, how you mitigate it, and how you potentially trade it as well.